In episode 57, I took a look at integrating the Sweet Alert JavaScript library as a third-party library that we would just include into our Rails app without using a gem. So we basically go and integrate this uh, modal dialog into our app um, by downloading the JavaScript files from their website and then putting that into our Rails app. And you can see the result here. So this worked really well. And we simply drop the Sweet Alert uh, jo JavaScript and CSS into the vendor folder. Now, the reason why we put it in vendor assets was because this is a third party library that we don't want to edit so we can easily upgrade it in the future. Um, the code that you are writing specific for this application belongs in app assets and third party stuff or shareable code should go into vendor assets. Now, you want to even further extract these, um, these libraries when you're planning on using it in multiple applications. So in this case, Sweet Alert, we might want to use in our next application and it would make sense for us to, uh, rather than copying these files into that application, to pull these out into a gem that basically just supplies a front-end JavaScript library. Um, and you've probably used Bootstrap SAS or any of those gems like that that provide front-end JavaScript or CSS. And uh, we're going to talk about how to create a gem like that today. Now the way this works is really simple. We're going to create a new gem with the bundle gem command and we're going to call it Sweet Alert. And once we have the sweet alert gem, we can open it up in our editor. And uh, really the only thing we need to edit in here is the lib sweetalert.rb file. And the rest of these you can go through on your own time, but the one that we need to focus on and the one line of code we actually need to write is a class in here called engine. This is going to inherit from Rails engine. And this more or less is saying that when Rails loads this gem, it's going to look for this engine class. And if it's defined, then it's going to treat this uh, gem's directory structure a little bit differently. It's going to work um, sort of like your Rails application, almost as if you had a Rails app inside of a Rails app. And how that will work is by copying these directories over. So we're going to take the vendor uh, the to-do list vendor folder, and we're just going to straight up copy it into the sweet alert uh, gem. So this is the exact same vendor assets JavaScripts file and style sheet that we had in our Rails application. And if we switch over to that, um, we're actually going to want to delete these two files out of it. So I'm going to do that in the terminal. I'm going to remove the to-do list vendor uh, assets JavaScripts file and the to-do list vendor assets style sheets uh, style sheet file. So those two are removed and we can go back to the Rails app and this time we can say let's include the sweet alert gem uh, and we're going to load it locally from a path and we're going to use users go rails code sweet alert which is where I created that gem. So we'll add the gem in and we can uh, turn off our rail server. We can run bundle to make sure it loads this gem uh, from the directory. Then we can restart our rail server and we can go back to our rails app, refresh the page. And if we click the delete link, we will still get the, um, the dialogue that we got from sweet alert. Only this time there's no CSS or JavaScript inside of our app that is entirely being found from the sweet alert gem. And our application JS is still requiring the exact same file name as the file, but it's now inside of the gem. So this class of engine uh, inheriting from Rails engine is basically going to tell Rails, when you load this gem, you also want to add its directories to the load path. So anytime you, anytime you add a uh, gem that has an engine inside of it, Rails will say, okay, when we search for JavaScript or CSS files in the asset pipeline for compiling or rendering to the page, we're also going to look in the Rails app, the vendor directory, and the gem, um, and the vendor directory inside of the gem as well. And 
With that, you can hop into the gem directory and run rake release after you've updated the gem spec with the proper summary and all of that. And then once you run this, uh, it will ask for your credentials for rubygems.org. It will log you in. It will release the gem for your very first version. And uh, once you've done that, make sure you post a link to it in the comments section below and uh, share it with the rest of the people watching. That's really awesome. So I definitely encourage you to release a gem uh, for a front-end library if you come across one that needs it and uh, just start maintaining some open source stuff. That's fantastic. So if you have any other JavaScript or front-end related questions that you would like to see in episodes, let me know in the comments as well. And with that, um, I will leave it to you and your challenge is to go build a gem for a, a library that, uh, that could use one. And I will talk to you next episode.